Many of our world's mountains rise and fall at a pace nearly impossible to comprehend. The slow changes in their elevation, perhaps mere inches over thousands of years, can hardly be measured. They seem eternal, allowing us to believe that what lies beneath is solid and still. To understand mountains, we must view them on the vast expanse of geological time, spanning millions of years. Yet, from this vantage point, some mountains form in a heartbeat. Peering from the summit of Capulin Volcano, the landscape in every direction appears stable and at peace. But it wasn't always so. What lies below us was once an active volcano field. The Raton Clayton Volcanic Field covers 8,000 square miles. More than 100 volcanoes once erupted across this region some forming from violent eruptions over the course of days or weeks. The truth is that our peaceful lives on the surface of the world exist at the mercy of a turbulent underworld. Instead of picturing this land as strong and stable, imagine it as a thin, fragile piece of fabric stretching over an ever-shifting landscape of rock and magma. In certain places on our planet, shifts in the earth pull apart the crust, thinning it and allowing rock to move up and melt, which is precisely what gave birth to Capulin Volcano, one of the youngest volcanoes in this region. About 60,000 years ago, molten rock forced its way through fissures in the geological plates beneath our feet. The lava, packed with superheated gas, violently burst skyward, splattering, exploding, hurling red-hot cinders and lava bombs high into the sky. The falling rock cooled and collected around the vent, rising upward more than 300 feet. The cinder cone was born but Capulin wasn't finished. In a matter of weeks, maybe months, the vent's violent eruption slowed and magma began pooling inside the cinder cone. With nowhere else to go, it oozed from the base of Capulin and then emanated in all directions until 16 square miles were covered. The lava cooled and finally, Capulin was extinct, one of the most perfectly shaped cinder cone volcanoes in North America. Thousands of years later, small clues help us piece together the details of its creation. The rim of the volcano itself offers one such clue. One side is higher than the other, suggesting which direction the wind blew and carried cinders during the eruption. The flowing lava that followed left behind its own story to be uncovered. 
There's a lot of geologic features that you can see at Capulin Volcano, and I would say the most dramatic is the cinder cone itself, and that really is what sets Capulin apart. But there's a lot of other clues that you can see. As the lava is coming up out of the Earth's crust, the outer surface of the lava cools relatively quickly and forms a shell. The hot lava is flowing inside kind of a tube formed by cool lava. If one of those lava tubes becomes blocked, the lava backs up within the tube and can inflate the tube, allowing something called a push-up to form. And this bulged upward and then broke out and formed this boil of lava on top of the lava flow. And you can see here the curved, those kind of curved fractures give you the sense that that's how it formed, that it bulged upward. All the episodes of volcanism that contributed to Capulin are really well preserved because of its young age. And so they allow us to understand how this cinder cone formed and evolved. Capulin Volcano stands apart as a geological wonder, a mountain created in months instead of millennia. But the cinders are only half the story. It would take thousands of years for plants and animals to establish themselves here. And it was the smallest of things that transformed this mountain of rocks into a place brimming with life. The lichens were some of the first organisms that colonized the cinders and the volcanic rocks at Capulin. And um, over thousands of years, they were able to begin to break down those rocks and start to produce the soil that other organisms needed to survive. Everything's based around soil. Soil is kind of the foundation of, of any kind of habitat or ecosystem. A lot of the native prairie species that we plant and propagate have those really deep fibrous root systems that help to anchor the soil in place. So these are some of the native uh, wildflower species that we're working on propagating um, in order to plant out in the wild to help support our native pollinator populations, um, including bees, butterflies, hummingbirds, and other related species. In terms of biodiversity, there are over 73 species of birds, about 30 species of mammals, about 15 species of reptiles and amphibians that have been found here. Just the fact that Capulin is situated in this sort of transitional zone between the plains and the Rocky Mountains allows visitors to get the chance to see a very biologically diverse cinder cone habitat. With this plant and animal life came humans. Archaeologists believe that humans arrived at least 10,000 years ago to hunt the huge Pleistocene bison. Thousands of years later, travelers on the Santa Fe Trail would rely on Capulin as an important waypoint, rising on the edge of the prairie. The trail, skirting the edge of the expanding country was used by the Spanish pursuing tales of gold, by Mexican and American traders hauling commercial goods to and from Missouri, and by pioneers with visions of a new life out west. They would all encounter people that had lived in the region for millennia. The Jicarilla, the Pawnee, the Comanche, the Mescalero, tribes who traced their very origins to the landscape that surrounds Capulin Volcano. It's as far as the history goes, 
it's been time immemorial. Our people had a far range all the way down into what is now the state of Texas, the Gulf of Mexico, clear up into Colorado. And this was one of the routes that the buffalo did take coming and going north and south. So that's one of the main reasons why our people did come to this area from the beginning of time. To our people, the lava is sacred, that it came from the center of the earth. And we refer to earth as Mother Earth. So going up on Kaplan is special because the lava rocks, they have a life beating in them. Okay, we use this, the sage. This is a narrow leaf yucca. And then here's a sumac plant. We get berries from it. The plants high up are special. These are thought of as being a little bit stronger because they're higher and they get the rain first. They get the snow first, they get the sunlight first. The spirituality of the place is very strong. Mother Earth bore us. It, it bears the food that we eat, the plants that we need in everyday life, even in this day and age. Every corner of Capulin Volcano offers a small glimpse into the life of an ever-evolving mountain. Whether we come to experience the night sky, the landscape, the summit, or the inside of the earth itself, evidence of change is everywhere. Change driven quickly by the massive forces beneath us or slowly by the tiniest of forces before us. What appears still is always persistently changing.